Oh my goodness, there's just so much I've been doing and what I've got to do. A... Hey everybody, welcome to Rock Solid Productions, where in this video we're going to talk pickups from the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Rock Solid Productions. If this is your first time to the channel, I want to take a second and thank you for stopping by. Do me a favor, if you like what you see here, go ahead, check out some of the other videos that we have on the channel. If you really like what you see, hit that subscribe button for me. That way, each and every time we do upload something new, you're kept the most up to date. We just got back from the Portland Retro Gaming Expo and we had an absolute blast out there. Had a whole lot of fun with Gabo and Riff from the Pixel Game Squad, hanging out with people like the immortal John Hancock, John Riggs, Ryan Schlemmer from Castlemania Games, the folks at Retrobit, Hyperkin, and a whole lot more. But in addition to some great memories, we brought back the goods too, and some of which may have showed up after the fact, but we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So the Friday of the event, basically the hall was open just for the free play arcade but there were some vendors that did actually have a few things for sale. And that's actually where I got my first pickup of the show, and I picked up a copy of Rampage for the Sega Master System. Now, I love this game for the NES, I loved it in the arcades, but the Master System just looks that little bit better, sounds that little bit better. And they were asking $17 for it, I got it for only 12. And the one bummer, there's no manual, but above and beyond that, this is in great shape. One of the things I love about this game too is the fact that it does look a whole lot different than what the Sega Master System games normally do with just the blue and white checkerboard. The red really pops on that. Now, above and beyond that, another item that I did get Friday afternoon, well, you can say that I got my initiation into the Pixel Game Squad. Now, if you do want to order a set of these glasses, head on over to their channel. They do have them for sale up on their Amazon store, but Riff was kind enough to gift me a set of Pixel Game Squad glasses. I'm going to put these on because those are actually kind of dirty right now. We also headed out Friday from uh, the convention floor itself after we played some free games, found out Gabo's stupid good at Street Fighter. We headed to a local game store called Retro Game Trader. After looking around, and I was cautious because I knew, hey, the, the show was going to be this weekend, and we weren't able to see many vendors on Friday. They were all locked away. But I did manage to find a copy of Ghostbusters for the Famicom. Now, I thought this was the one that was like the really good version, and unfortunately, when I'm finding out what I wanted was Ghostbusters 2. It's still a Famicom game. I love Famicom games. I have my Sharp Famicom Twin down below here. We'll definitely be firing this up at some point in time. Uh, but I had a really decent price on this. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Now, Friday night before everything was all said and done and we went back to the hotel to get ready for the next day, we went out and we met up with the Metal Jesus Rocks crew uh, between Riff and Gabo and I. And my good buddy John Riggs, Riggs, you didn't have to do this. But he knew that, much like him, I love the Famicom disc system. Like I mentioned, I've got a sharp Famicom twin that can play both. And for a while, I've been looking for a copy of Doki Doki Panic. Well, our good friend John Riggs made that happen. So uh, for those of you not familiar with Doki Doki Panic, it is the original version of Super Mario Brothers 2, but uh, for Japan, based on a Japanese TV show, and I'm just thrilled to finally have this in my collection. John, I cannot thank you enough. If you guys have not seen John before, you, come on, it's John Riggs. You've seen John before, but I'll have his information to his channel down below for you too. Saturday morning, we got up, we got breakfast, we headed to the hall, and there were a bunch of things I knew I wanted to pick up early on. And when I got in there, one of the things I always like to do is pick up the event poster and the program. These are things that'll just go in a memory box as far as the program goes. I will get this framed and put it up uh, somewhere in our room that we have here. But the nice thing about this, and it kind of ties into what we have going on back here, was it is, this year's theme was basically Mega Man. And it was done by the original artwork from the original box artist 
from Mega Man 2. And it just, it looks great. I also picked up a t-shirt because the folks at the hall had a two-on-one combo where you got an event t-shirt and an event uh, poster, and they would give you a break on it. Unfortunately, I waited too long. They didn't have a big boy size for me, so I got a different PRGE 2018 t-shirt, but it's something that I'll definitely wear with pride. And this thing is pretty amazing. Now walking around the hall, you know, I went and I met up with uh, Ryan from Castlemania Games. I wanted to check his booth out first, just because we had never met. And he was actually sharing his booth with John Riggs, who we've already talked about a little bit. And to help support Mr. Riggs and help support my boys Riff and Mikey and, and Gabbo the Giver and Ricky. I picked up a copy of the NES Pursuit. This is one of John Riggs homebrew games and I haven't played it yet. We'll do it on a live stream, uh, but this is something that is based on Riff and Ricky going out and doing their retro game collection. I can't wait to try this out. Thanks, John. If you guys do want to get your hands on these, John does sell these when he goes to different conventions. So if you know he's going to be there, check these out. Now, I just recently bought a Sega Saturn, and one of the things for me that I've really been looking for has been what's called an action replay, and that's this guy here. And what the action replay does is it gives you a memory boost uh, where it gives you a four meg memory card. Yeah, I know, four megs. <laughs> but back in the day, that was significant. In addition, this also allows you to play Japanese import games. Now, the same booth where I got this they also had perhaps one of the coolest pickups that I got all day Saturday. And this was, I didn't get this till the end of the day, but what this is, it's a Famicom controller. I love the Famicom, right? Mine's sitting up there. The Sharp Famicom Twin is down there. What's nice with this controller is it actually will plug into the NES. So we can hook it up to our high def NES that we have down there and get the original aesthetics of the uh, Famicom controller. Now what I like about this one better than the original NES controller is the fact that the corners are rounded versus square. A lot more comfortable in the hands, especially I'm getting older, a little bit of arthritis here and there. This is a lot easier to hold, a lot more comfortable in the fact that it does plug right into my NES. Yeah, we're going to set this down here because we will be playing some NES games with it really, really soon. After the first day, that's about all I picked up except for one item that I had pre-ordered ahead of time from Ryan at CastlemaniaGames.com and I was going to use it to have the video go through here. It's actually going through my OSSC and my RGB modded uh, Super NES Junior. But I finally have my Retro Tink. Uh, these are starting to ship. Demand is really, really high on them. If you want one of these and you're not familiar what it is, the Retro Tink is essentially a line doubler. So basically it takes the 240p outputs of like the Super NES, of the NES, the Famicom, and it will line double it to 480p. It will take uh, component and composite video along with S-Video too, that's really cool. So for like the, uh, for the Saturn, for the Genesis, for even the Dream, uh, the Dreamcast. Dreamcast? Dreamcast. Yes, Dreamcast. You can go ahead and hook this up to a modern TV. Now, one thing is it does use a micro HDMI cable. Ryan sells those too. So go ahead if you're interested in checking those out. We'll actually have a full blown review on this little bad boy really, really soon. So that is the Retro Tink. So technically it's not a pickup, it's more of a receipt and a delivery. Now, Saturday morning went by really quick. Saturday during the day went by really quick. Saturday night, we basically went back to the hotel and we dropped after we went out to dinner. But Sunday morning, oh, Sunday morning, I didn't get, you know, as you see, I didn't really pick up many games. You know, I picked this up the first day. I picked that up from Retro Game Trader. Riggs hooked me up with that, but I really didn't get any games the first day. But that's where the second day came in. Now, before I got games though, I got storage for games and I had been eyeballing this one the first day and hoping that it would be there the second day. This is a storage cabinet for Super NES games and basically inside as you can see you can store up to 20 different games and it does have this nice drawer that comes in and out of it. The wood's in pretty good shape and everything. There's some like a little speckling on the face of it and at first I didn't realize what it was. I just kind of scraped it with my fingernail a bit. Paraffin wax. Someone spilled a candle on it or splattered a candle. 
They were asking $30, I got it for 20. I looked on eBay, these are going for like 100 bucks, 80 to 100 bucks. So really happy about this. And the cool thing too, is I do have my N64 one back here. Kind of will match that aesthetic. It'll go over here somewhere and free up my storage because I do have more games that I need to store now. In addition to that, I was looking, there were a couple games I was looking for Doki Doki Panic was one, John hooked it up. I was looking for Master System games, and just as I was going around, I also found our local, it's funny, I had to travel 3,000 miles to run into a guy who has his store 20 minutes away from me. Vic at We Play Games had this poster when I ran into him at the Missouri Game Con back in August. Well, when I saw him there, I asked him if he had this again, and they didn't have it on the floor. However, they talked to their guys. They actually had it back with the rest of their stuff at the hotel. He brought one, and I picked that up. Uh, you know, just love the artwork on this because this is the Super Famicom version of the box art, and just it's got a glossy finish to it. Looks really cool. Totally dig it. Thank you, Vic, for a great deal on that one there. Um, in addition, I was just checking out everything that was going on, and one of the cool things that they had around the conference hall was they had these little postcards with different game systems on it. This one was in the Atari Age booth and basically had the Atari 2600 on it, the release date, uh, the dates actually of the Portland Retro Gaming uh, Convention. But the other thing cool about it is the fact I got my hands on this one here. And what's special about this, this is the Nintendo PlayStation. I got to play it. I got to talk to Terry Debolt, the gentleman who actually purchased it from the auction. And we just got to talking, got to getting along. He pulled one of these out, unbeknownst to me, and he just autographed it for me. So very cool that I have an autographed version of the uh, Nintendo PlayStation uh, kind of card here that we have. I'll definitely keep that uh, in really good condition. Something very cool I'll never forget. Now, as the convention was going on, it's like, man, I haven't got any games. I want games. Finally, I started running into some games that not only did I want, but they were a good price. The first one for the Master System is R-Type. And R-Type is just a great shoot 'em up and everything. Um, and again, on the Master System, it looks terrific. I would say it almost looks as good as the Super Nintendo. I won't go quite so far, but it does look almost that good. And now this game here too, is just the game itself, no manual, uh, but they were asking $30 for it, I got it for $25. So I got a really good deal on that one here too. And then my last pickup of the day as far as actual games, 10 minutes before the end, you know, what I, what I call a happy hour, when vendors don't wanna pack this stuff up and take it home, they wanna get rid of it. I actually went to one last booth and uh, picked up two games, and the first one that I picked up was Rastan for the Sega Master System. And this is one of them that Castlemania Ryan just could not say enough good things about. Um, it's kind of a side-scrolling hack and slash, and uh, again, no manual, but the cartridge itself is in really, really good shape. And finally, I was bummed out, and I had talked to Riggs about this. I was like, dude, there's no Famicom Disk System games. There's no Famicom Disk System games. And then I found one of the Famicom Disk System games I was actually looking for in the same booth that had Rastan. And this is Bio Miracle Buta Upa. And basically why I wanted this, I love the, fam the Famicom game YY World 2. Again, Riggs is the one that got me hooked on it. And this is a complete inbox. It's even got, like you can see here, the whole plastic shroud um, copy of Bio Miracle. Bootka Upa, and I know that I'm probably butchering it, but you, know, you can see the instruction manual is there. It's got the whole uh, disc itself is here. I just love the artwork on these things. It looks amazing. It looks almost brand new. And uh, I got a good price on it. I'm not gonna actually say the price. I did get them to come down a little bit on it, but thanks so much to uh, the store that hooked me up with this one because it was one of those where I was walking out and we were just chit-chatting uh, after I bought Rastan. And I mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm looking for Famicom Disk System. Nobody's got one. They're like, hey, we've got one. Well, what do you got? Let me look at it. And they pulled out the one that I was looking for. Now, a couple other things I did pick up at the show. 
was, and actually this is a little bit after the show too, someone had given Riff some promotional posters for the, uh, basically from Nintendo. So Yoshi and Poochie's Woolly World, Super Mario 3 uh, Maker for the 3DS. These are awesome posters. We'll get framed and put up in here somewhere. The fact this is kind of that, that 3D texture too, it looks really, really kind of trippy actually at this angle. Um, and that is Bowser, it's not Bowser, just for the record. I also stopped off and I talked to Walter Day, you know, the guy from Twin Galaxies. I signed up, they've got this free magazine, Old School Gamer Magazine. You can check out the artwork and everything on here. There's a, uh, a neat pull-out poster inside too. Talked to Walter quite a bit. Uh, he actually knew about Champaign-Urbana. Asked what I did, we talked about flying drones. So really a sharp and interesting guy. Um, it was kind of weird and surreal to talk to Walter Day from King of Kong and from all the old TV shows and whatnot. It really one of the cool, cool, I don't know that you could say it's accomplishment, but you know, just a, a kind of a surreal thing of, I was talking to Walter Day, that's pretty dang cool. Now, as the show was getting ready to wind up, the boys over at Retrobit, specifically Richard, he's like, Gary, I've got something for you. I like when people have things for me. Well, he handed me one of these guys here. We talked about it recently. This is the Retrobit Go Retro Portable. It comes preloaded with, what is it? 260 classic retro games. We will be doing an unboxing and review here on the channel soon. So make sure again, you stay subscri subscribed. That way you are kept the most up to date. Um, I love the box art. I love the way it looks. Um, I got to play, they also gave one to uh, John Riggs too. And I played around with his just a little bit cause he took his out. I saved mine, <laughs> but uh, it feels really good. It actually feels really well scaled compared to a regular Game Boy. So I'm excited to check that out very soon. And then, like I mentioned, we had a few things that arrived after the fact. The folks over at Insurrection Industries, yeah, we have a Carby here, will be doing a test. If you haven't checked out our interview with the folks over at uh, Insurrection Industries, check out our link up there to that video. Uh, again, very cool, very thankful of them to spend some time with us on the show floor and then to hook us up with the review unit. Thank you guys so much, I really appreciate that. Again, stay tuned, we'll do a full review and unboxing on that coming up soon. Finally, the last thing that kind of came out of the show itself, actually we'll show you two other things. First of all, so Riff and Gabo bought so much stuff, we actually had to go buy them another suitcase so they could check a bag on the airplane as they were headed home. We went to a local Goodwill and they found a bag for a reasonable price, but while I was digging around, just killing time, I came across this really cool Disneyland, the first quarter century book. I'm a huge Disney fan. I have been to Disney World now three times since 2013. I've been to Disneyland, let's see, 2001, 2014, 2016, trying to plan my next visit there too. We're going to be there for, or down in Disney World for the 50th coming up in 2021. We like Disney. Uh, but this is, you know, full color. Um, in spots has got uh, black and white pictures and others and just a really neat history of Disney and the cool thing too is I think this may have been something that belonged to a cast member reading some of the signatures in the open uh, part of the book and the best of all it was two bucks pretty cool it was normally $3.99 but it was on sale at Goodwill so uh, no game find well Riff found something cool for Mort which you guys will have to check out the Pixel Game Squad to see that. But that was my cool, probably the coolest thing I've gotten from Goodwill in a long, long time. And finally, just today, as we are filming this, I had a knock on the door. It was the man in the brown truck, and we had a box from the folks at Hyperken. They sent us a Mega Retron HD for review, so we'll be doing a full unboxing and review of this soon. I am really excited to check this out. There aren't many uh, clone systems for the Master System, and this will do Master System and Mega Drive, uh, 720p, 4x3, and 16x9 aspect ratio switch. It'll play PAL games, so like my copy uh, of, uh, what is this here? This is Mickey's Mickey Mania that I got from Irsha Gaming. Uh, it should be able to play this without a problem too. So make sure that you stay tuned for our full-blown review here of the Mega Retron HD 
coming very soon. <sighs> that was a lot of stuff to go over. Again, I gotta thank everyone who came by who stopped me. You know, the I'm sorry, the only one I can remember is Trip, and that's because I'm a fan of Star Trek Enterprise. It reminded me of Charles Tucker III. Trip, Trip, I will always remember your name. Goes without saying. Uh, but a lot of people came up, saw me at the show, said hi. I appreciate everyone who stopped me and did that. And I'm excited to see you all at the next show that I go to. We'll have something posted soon as far as when we are going to our next show and where it's going to be. Uh, if you do have any questions about anything that we got here today, uh, anything about retro gaming, anything about the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also send me an email at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. Hit me up on Twitter at Rock Solid Studios, or we've always got the conversation going over on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Productions. One of the cool things we learned at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo is how to use the lens feature on Patreon. And if you want to help support the channel and get early access to all of our video content and exclusive content, head on over to patreon.com slash rocksolid for just a dollar a month, $12 a year. You get early access to all of our video content, that exclusive content as well. You can help suggest videos and a whole lot more. Also, if you want to support the channel by picking up some merchandise, you can do that too over at our Teespring store where we've got the uh, NES style cartridge, Super NES, and the N64. I am still working on trying to find a good Mega Drive Master System uh, and Genesis cartridge to use as a template to get those shirts going. I will have the link on screen for you guys to check out right here. And finally, like I said at the top of the show, if you like what you see here, you want to see more, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Uh, helps us grow, helps us get noticed, helps us be able to go to more shows like the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. We had a blast. I cannot wait to get to go yet again. If you have a chance to go, I highly recommend it. My name is Gary. This has been Rock Solid Productions and our bounty from the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.